Hey gun people, we're doing uh, part two on this uh, 1911. This is the, the Desert Eagle, uh, made in Israel. Nice gun, man. I like the finish. Um, I like the full length guide rod. I like the way they didn't cut through the frame on this part right here. So uh, a lot of good things that I like about this gun. So uh, now I've sprayed some oil and again I told you I, I kind of oil it up kind of good. So I need to slide my trigger in here. Normally I would put some oil on my trigger and wipe it down. I'm not wiping it down. Um, if I can get that trigger piece in there. Pretty tight little fit. You don't want to force this trigger. This trigger is a very sensitive. It can bend. If you bend it, it'll never work right again. So be very careful. This is very lightly. It may look like I'm being a little bit aggressive, but I am being very gentle not to force or bend this uh, this firing pin. Man, this sucker's giving me a hard time. Very tight fit. Again, I'm not, I'm not going really hard. I'm trying to get this kind of seated in there correctly. Okay, so there's my trigger. After I get my trigger on, I always hold it upside down and I see if my trigger will fall normally. See that if I push too if I don't push it hard, see how that trigger falls normally, but it's kind of sticking. I like it when it falls normally like that as soon as I hit it. This one's a little tight and I have to push it down. I don't really like that. So that might do some buffing on there on why I have to push this down. Not critical because I'm only pulling it that much and it's bouncing back at that much. It's going to have tension spring. But that's some of the things I'm looking for. Once you get your trigger in, I want to get this uh, magazine release in. And again, I've already wiped all these down. Magazine release will fit right in there like so. And um, Well, that's kind of odd. Did I not tighten that screw? This little screw piece here has to be tightened so it should just drop right in like it did that time. So I have that little screw piece and that screw is that retaining pin. So once it drops in then I need to turn it. Uh, if, you're, if your magazine release is sticking up like that, you're not going to be able to set that pin. You want to be able to push that mag spring in like you're pushing pressure, and that's when it locks. So if I try to unscrew this right now when it's flat on this side, it's not going to let me undo that firing pin because it's flat. I need this side flat and then be able to twist this, and it'll pop right in place. And then I check my tension. Check my tension and it works. So now my trigger's in. You notice it's dropping freely. Remember we talked about that freely? It's dropping freely. That's what I want. Uh, this piece right here is a monster. I'm probably going to say a few cuss words. Uh, if I get it on the first time, it'll be a freaking miracle. But uh, this is a heavy tension spring and there's two pieces. Man, this is really, oh, okay, the other piece is in. So there, there's three pieces of this. There's the top end, which people I've seen put this on the bottom. This doesn't go on the bottom because the trigger, when you put your gun together, fits in here. And that's what holds that down. That's when you cock this trigger, it's, it compresses this. So that little hole right there has to be able for the trigger. So you don't want this on the bottom and end up with this on the top because there's no place for this to hit. There's no little home for this little pit piece. So that would be backwards. So uh, I'm putting this in because that's going to be down on the firing pin. Putting that in, that's here. Now this little pin, this very little pin that I lost has a little lip. You don't want to lose it. It's not like any other pin. It's got a little bitty lip right here. That lip goes flat on this side. So the pin has to come in from this flat side and go in because the little bitty round nipple fills in that little hole right there. And hopefully you can see these 
things. But I have to get this thing pressed down below that hole, which is sometimes a major pain in the butt. So if I do it, it'll be great. Odds are, I'll just cuss. Mother. I have it. If I can get it in there. So I've got it in there just enough to where it holds it, but it won't go in. So I'm going to press this all the way down. And then slide it in as it's compressed. And now you notice that it's flat here. It blocks that spring and holds that spring down in there. And it should be smooth on this side. And it should fill in that little hole on that side. So now that spring's there. So, uh, Another tip on getting the uh, the sear, and I, I forgot the damn term, but anyway, these two pieces right here, you're going to need to look it up on how they get. I mean, I know I know how they go just because I've done it so many times. This flat part right here always goes against the trigger. So your trigger's right here. The flat part goes in here. The little hole comes out of this hole up here. So that's going to fit in there. And then this piece fits like this. Don't ask me how I know or why, but you can look it up and read it. So this has got to go into this back area here, which is very difficult for a lot of people. And I, I'm looking to get it in this little hole here. And as I get it in that little hole, oh, I push it too far up. So I keep it straight. Go back in here, push it up that little hole, let it fall flat. And now, as I see the little... Um, shit, whatever it is, people are going to be like, you don't even know the parts. I don't know the parts. Shut up. So, this this will move up and down, but I have to get a pin through here. And all pins on the 1911 go in the left side of the gun. So, if you're holding a gun, it goes in the left side. So, I need to know what pin goes in there, and it's going to be this pin here. But, it's very hard to get that pin to line up. So, what I always do is I keep a very small Allen wrench smaller than the pin, and I don't know if this is small, and I go in the opposite side and I try to line up these parts, but this is too big. I want a little bitty one. So I want the smallest uh, little Allen wrench I can get. So this is a nice smaller than the pin. So by getting this pin in here, it gives me more room to mess around and to line this up and that goes in very easy and now I test it to make sure these don't come out I know they're incorrect that slides up and down so now that I have this pin in here now I'm gonna push this through with my pin that's gonna hold these and it'll make it easier for me to line up because this is a very hard part to get for a lot of people and they get frustrated but if you do it this way it's pretty simple unless you drop the pin lose it let's try it again So it's not moving around, so I'm going to wiggle this little thing. There you go. So now it made it to where I push that pin in and my pieces are in nice and easy. That's That took me a long time to figure out, people. It may seem simple, but it makes it a whole lot easier. So this little pin in here has got to go in here. You've got a small end, you've got a, a bigger end. Small end goes in first. If you put it in backwards, it won't go all the way through. And that's there. Okay? Um, I'm going to pull that out right now so I don't lose that. Um, so now that I have this in there, I want to put my mainspring in. And this mainspring, or, or the flat spring, this, this part kind of tricks up people. I like to put it in with this metal piece here, slide it in there, and then it hooks right in here on this little slot. See that little slot right there? It's going to hook, but it's the other way. So in order to get this in the hook, if I put it in there first, it won't go in. So I have to get it in here a little high, slide it in the back, then once I lock it, then I just push it forward, and now it's in there. So that's how I'm going to put this pin in. Now to hold this flat spring in, that other piece that I was cussing about, if I slide this in just a little bit, now that holds that in. Don't want to put it all the way in, just enough to hold it. So then once I get that in there, I'm going to uh, get my hammer put in here, 
And the hammer, again, there's only three pins that go here. So I have one pin here, which we did to hold in the uh, sear. And then the next pin is going to hold in the trigger. And then the last pin doubles as your safety. And that goes in last to hold in your grip safety, which sits here. So this, these two pieces will be last. So now I have, uh, well, this pin goes at the bottom. This is the only pin with something in the middle because when you push that in here, there's a little piece in here that kind of pushes down on there and it holds it. So this is the only pin with something in the middle. So that's going to hold this in once I'm done. So I'll put that to the side. So now I need to get uh, my hammer in here. So I'm going to put the hammer in here. Again, it goes pretty much one way. Um, if I can get it lined up here. Okay, so the hammer's in there. So now remember, this piece right here that's flapping has got to go in this little hole right here. So when I slide this up, that's got to be right in the middle. So, and the hammer's got to be uncocked. So, in order to get this in here, before I do this, I need to get pull this back out, get my grip safety in here, put my grip safety in, and now you'll see this little pin in here. It'll go right in between here, and then I want to slide this up, and you notice it put tension on that trigger right there. I want to make sure I get this completely. All right, there we go. So it's fully forward. My grip safety's in. And this piece right here is what I'm going to do next. Because you have to put pressure on here in order to get these holes to line up. So I'm going to put some pressure on there. Slide that pin in with the uh, half piece there. And again, this pin is round on one side. And it's got a little con concave to where you push your pin out. So if you're pushing the pin out, it always goes in like this. So when I push it out, I go straight through. So it comes in on this side, on the left side, like all pins. It won't go in there. So I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on this to get this started. Still doesn't want to go in. I'm going to use the rubber side of this little mallet here. And now that tapped in on the rubber side. So now that's holding this spring, I got my, uh, oh shit, did I let that pop out? No, okay. So this is in here, so my last pin that goes in here is my um, safety, and that's the pin that holds in this. So when I slide this in here, this can't go in unless your hammer's caught. So I want to get this locked in before I want that hammer cocked. Now I'm going to cock this hammer. Now I've got all this tension on here. And now this pin has to go in here. And it clicks in pretty easy, like so, if you wiggle it right in between. But you notice there's no spring in here. That's why it went in so easy. So I always like to line it up. It goes in easy. I know it's right. Now I put my little spring in here, which is going to cause tension. Uh, which is going to cause me some tension when I put this one back in, which is okay. So it won't go in like that. I use that same skinny little uh, pin and I just slide it behind there and, and push that in until I can get the click in there and it snaps right in. So now I have my safety in. It's working good. On, off. My hammer's working. I'll do a function check. Does it release? Yes. Do I have a half cock? Yes. Do I have a full cock? Yes. Will it fire without me pressing this? No. So I press in my grip safety, and now when I pull the trigger, it fires. So, slides back together. All I do is put my grips on, and because I put some of that oil, remember I talked about this oil I put on there? I'll just give them a quick little wipe down to get any excess off the back, but it really conditioned them, made them nice. 
On grip screws, I always tell people, reverse thread your screws before you put them in. So when I come in here, I always go reverse right here. Click. There it is. Got that reverse. Oh, shit. I was still going reverse. Put that screw in. Uh, do a little reverse here. I'll hear a click. Um, and that click I'm looking for tells me it's threaded properly. Flip it over. Wipe off this grip. Good tight fit there. These screws again have been oiled and wiped down. Reverse for the click. There's my click. I know I'm threaded right. Alrighty. I don't put grips on too tight. Um, these grips will probably be coming off in a month or so when I give this a second cleaning because I've got all this oil on here. So I'm just giving them a little tight down. So now this is together. This line needs to come on here. Uh, I'm going to put this on, line this up to where I get the hole. Hang on, I got to concentrate over here. So, again, I always put my pin in loose like this. To get my slide locked in and I know it's functioning right, then I'm going to worry about getting this in this little area right here. Now this is called an idiot scratch where people try to slide this up and scratch it. I don't slide it up, I go straight down. So I'm going to pull this out, release some of the tension off this, pull this out, make sure I'm clearing my blue area. Once that goes in straight, then I'm going to line up my little half notch right there so it's right there and I'm going to come straight down and push straight down into there so it locks it in. So I'm not going from the bottom up. And this one's pretty tough. So then it pushes straight in. Man, this thing's smooth. Woo, it was kind of a little stiff before. Locks to the rear nicely. Um, no more marks on the barrel. Got a nice finish. 400 bucks or so out the door. Uh, very, very nice gun. I, 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 I really like this gun. I haven't shot it yet, but I can tell by looking at all the parts on how they fit. Um, the finish, the trigger, um, just everything about this gun is very nice. So uh, I don't know if you can find one used. If you're an instructor or a police instructor, I can order this from a factory at almost cost. I think this gun would cost me $550 or $600 brand new if I ordered it from a factory. But if I can get it for $400 and it's got a little dirt on it, I can clean it up. I've got a nice gun, a $700 gun retail, uh, you know, for $400. I'm okay with that. And I kind of like taking a gun that's kind of been neglected and giving it a nice cleaning and making it look nice. So this was part two, part one, I did all the way up to the slide. Those are the areas that I kind of like to concentrate on. Um, again, when I'm looking at a gun, I'm looking for wear here. If this has been pressed in a whole bunch and they're scratching to where it looks cheap here. I'm looking for a whole bunch of wear here on a trigger if it's fired a lot of rounds. Um, when I lock this slide back, I'm looking for any marring on here. Uh, I want to make sure this is a nice tight fit. This, this should be a little loose. But this guide rod should be nice and tight. The trigger looks nice. The grips haven't been neglected, dropped. There's not a lot of chips or anything on here. And then I like when the gun's cocked, when the safety goes on fairly easy. That's got a really nice safety. It's got some, you know, I've got a, I've got some $1,000, $1,500, uh-oh, battery level low. All right.